Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice rational equation. We have 1 over x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 squared equals 1. Uh, I thought I made this video before but when I checked I found out that we did a similar problem which I'm going to share the link with you down below. Uh, that was the cubes. So this time we're going to be dealing with squares. Alright great so I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and make a common denominator. And then we're going to get a difference of two squares. And then at the bottom, you're going to get the product of these. And if you multiply them together, you get the following. Easy, right? Well, let's go ahead and expand everything. You know, let's just go ahead and expand it. x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x squared. And then here we're going to get x squared multiplied by x plus 1 squared, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and distribute x squared over it. We get x to the fourth power plus 2x to the third power plus x squared. All right, so x squared cancels out on the left-hand side, which is kind of nice. And we can put everything on the right-hand side so that x to the fourth becomes positive. Let's go ahead and put it all together. x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, great. So this is a cortic. And do you actually, do you want to see how the cortic formula works? All right, let's go ahead and work on it. So we're going to get a cubic from here. That's the goal. And, you know, we know how to solve cubics, uh, whatever you want to call that method, you know, any, um, any name you give it. But uh, that's our goal. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this cortic expression and we're going to write it as x squared plus x plus b quantity squared minus c times x plus d squared. The reason why I use a c there is because the coefficient of x doesn't have to be 1. Uh, we're going to get a squared x squared so we don't know what it is, that's why we, we put a C there. But if C is 1, that means the coefficient of x squared is going to be negative 1, or whatever that is, ends up happening. So, that's the goal, uh, and this is going to bring a cubic equation into the picture. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, you can go ahead and distribute this. I'm going to skip the details and give you what we get from here. I mean from the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is going to give you x to the fourth plus 2ax cubed plus a squared plus 2b minus c x, x squared, I didn't say it, 2ab minus 2cd times x plus b squared minus cd squared. Awesome. And this is equal to our original cortic here. And then we're going to see what we can do. We're going to compare the coefficients. For example, x to the fourth matches up. Of course, the coefficient of x cubed is 2a or 2, which means a is equal to 1, which is nice, by the way. And then we're going to look at the other coefficients here. Let's go ahead and take a look at them, including the constant. The coefficient of x squared is positive 1. The coefficient of x is negative 2. And the constant term is negative 1. So this kind of gives us a system. But since we know that a is equal to 1, I can actually go ahead and plug it in here. a squared plus 2b minus c is equal to 1. But a is equal to 1, so these two cancel out, leaving us with 2b minus c is equal to 0, or 2b equals C or C equals 2B. All right. 2B or not 2B. I have to say it. Sorry about that. So C equals 2B, A equals 1. So that's kind of nice. Uh, good improvement. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other ones. For example, um, I can just uh, divide both sides by 2 here. AB minus CD becomes negative 1. And then I can basically replace uh, C with 2B, right? And then A with 1. So if you replace A with 1 and C with 2b, you're going to get uh, 2bd equals negative 1. Obviously, we can kind of write it in a nicer way, like negate both sides, and that negative just bothers me. I don't know why. Probably OCD. So you can write it like this if you multiply both sides by negative 1. And then looking at the constant term, this gives us a system, right? That's not c squared. That's cd squared. Okay, great. So we have the following system. Uh, CBD, three variables, three equations, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and solve this system. Okay, uh, how do you solve this system? Let me 
uh, write those one more time. So first of all, uh, notice that from the second equation, 2BD minus B is equal to 1. We can factor out B, and that gives us 2D minus 1 equals 1. And we can kind of isolate B here, which is a little easier, 2D minus 1. So now I'm able to write B in terms of D, and then I have another equation that involves B, C, D, and of course C can always be replaced with 2B, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and plug everything in. So now we have uh, b squared minus c d squared equals 1. And I can kind of replace c with 2b and write it like this. And then now replace b with 1 over 2d minus 1. That's where we get the cubic from. So b is going to be replaced with 1 over 2d minus 1. That will be squared minus 2 times d squared times b, which is 1 over 2d minus 1. The whole thing is equal to 1. And if you kind of arrange this equation, you know, I'm going to, again, skip you, uh, kind of spare you the trouble, make a common denominator, multiply both sides, so on and so forth, and you get a cubic, and this is the cubic you get from here. Please check your work with what I got, and if I made a mistake, let me know. Hopefully that is correct. So this is the cubic you're supposed to be getting. This is the cubic I was talking about. Remember, for the quartic formula, I said we're going to end up with a cubic. Notice that the sum of the coefficients is zero. Didn't I tell you all the time, check the sum and odds and evens also. So d equals 1 is a possible solution, which indicates that b is equal to uh, 1, and then c is equal to 2. So we got all the coefficients. Now we can go ahead and write our quartic as factored uh, using difference of two squares, which is kind of cool because that is going to give you the solutions. That's what's really cool about it. Obviously, you can get this factorization without doing, going through all of this, but that would be a little harder, especially uh, the cube of a trinomial would be tough. But anyways, from here, you can kind of set this equal to zero and kind of put the equations on different sides, or you can do a difference of two squares, but I prefer to square root both sides and consider two solutions from here. One of them is going to be this one, and then I'll talk about the solutions, and the other one is going to be the negative of the right hand side right and from here you're going to be getting two quadratic equations let me go ahead and simplify that for you the first one is going to give you x squared plus 1 minus root 2 x plus 1 minus root 2 equals 0 the other one is going to give you x squared plus 1 plus root 2 x plus 1 plus root 2 equals 0 awesome so unfortunately this one has complex solutions non-real complex solutions okay and the other one is going to give you a really cool solution and here's what the solutions look like x equals negative b if you use the quadratic formula plus minus but the problem with that is um, you only one of the solutions is supposed actually no never mind both of them should work so we get a negative one plus uh, i messed up by the way ne yeah no that's right a negative one plus root two plus minus the square root of 2 root 2 minus 1, and all of that is divided by 2. So that's going to give you real cool solutions, and let's talk about the second method. Okay, sorry about the first method. That was kind of long, but I promise second method is going to be much shorter. All right, great. So uh, we have the following expression. Remember, after we made a common denominator and distribute, we got the following, right? Because x squared canceled out, remember? Um, so... Uh, what am I supposed to do here? I'm going to complete the square here. First of all, notice that these are both squares, so I can kind of write this as that. And that should give me x squared plus x quantity squared equals 2x plus 1. Now, I'm going to complete the square here, which is a very effective method. Uh, one of the things that you should always check. Uh, to complete the square, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 2 times this and then 1. And on the right-hand side, I'll be doing the same thing. But notice that it kind of gives us something real cool. Uh, if you do that, we already have a 1. So that's just going to be another 1. So that's going to make a 2. But on the left-hand side, this gives us, if you call this y, this becomes y squared plus 2y plus 1, which is y plus 1 squared. In other words, we can write this as x squared plus x plus 1 quantity squared equals what we have on the right-hand side. But you can kind of add these ones, make a 2, and 
take out a 2 there and that's going to become x squared plus you know uh, you can kind of write this as 2x squared plus 2x that that's going to give you 2x squared plus 4x so you can take out a 2x here and then kind of like I put a 1 here great so now that's a perfect square so I have x squared plus x plus 1 quantity squared equals 2 times x plus 1 squared and if you proceed as before one of them is going to be non-real complex and one of them is just going to be a nice solution the positive one and from here you're going to get the same you're going to get the same solution so if I write it as a quadratic it's, this is what it looks like and from here x values become negative 1 plus root 2 plus minus the square root of 2 root 2 minus 1 all over 2 and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye